Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday morning. We trust you had a wonderful Christmas. And thank you for being with us this morning in our online service this morning. Uh, we want to uh, make sure that if you're visiting us for the very first time to please uh, fill out the uh, request form and the visitors uh, link. And we would love to reach out to you. Thank you so much for that. We're going to have our service this morning. Our worship team's ready to go. So we're going to jump right into our worship songs. So join us this morning as we sing. Shepherds came to see the baby Stood by his mother's side He laid the Savior inside a manger Oh, what a glorious night 
you guys excellent job this morning we're about to show our announcements but before we do I just want to make one quick announcement um, we want to make sure that while you're here next week on January 3rd when you leave your car make sure that you lock it just for the safety of we have we have folks that like to come in during our service and uh, sneak around and look in our vehicles so uh, we've had had that activity coming up in the over the holidays so we want to make sure that your stuff is safe while you're uh, here in the service, so make sure that you lock your doors. Uh, thank you very much. So we are going to be meeting back here on January 3rd. That's next Sunday, and we're looking forward to that. Pay attention to the announcements because there's going to be some things of sign-ups for our new Bible studies and discipleships that we got coming up. We're looking forward to that. So here's our announcements, and uh, we'll see you in just a minute. <laughs> online today. If this is your first time joining us, please like or subscribe and click on the connection card to let us know a little something about you. Uh, also, if you have anything you'd like us to pray for you, we'd love to hear from you. Regular in-person worship services will resume next Sunday, January 3rd, and please remember to wear your masks at all times except for when you're in your seats. A teacher helper is needed in C4 and also workers are needed for the nursery. You don't have to have any experience 
just a desire to serve and a love for kids. Creation to Christ Bible Studies begin January 19th. I will lead Tuesday night's Bible study, and if you can't make Tuesdays, Bob Smith will lead Wednesday's evenings. Studies are at 7 p.m. here at the church. Registration is open, and you can sign up in the foyer, on our website, or on Facebook. We believe that worship is the act of putting God first in everything, including our giving. So if you'd like to give, you can give through the Tithely app, through our website, or through the mail. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us that, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and all things are become new. the 
Well, good morning. Um, I know you just had to sit through some announcements of me looking all shifty-eyed. I hate those announcements. I got to learn how to do them better. I don't know what I'm afraid of. I'm nervous. Look at me. The camera loves me. And yet, there I am, all nerve-wracked. Marlene. I think it's Marlene. She yells at me when I don't do it right. So, if you believe that. All right. Good morning. It's good to see you all today. I'm glad you all are here. Uh, if you just give me a few minutes, I have a short message. This will be a topical message, as Pastor Scott's done before and talked about. It's not preferred method, but as we're here in this spot between Christmas and New Year's, um, it seemed like a topic to talk about. So let's pray and then we'll get started. Father, you know me, you know my weaknesses, you know what gifts you've given me, Lord. Now help me, Lord, to find those right now and find the right words. Um, I have no doubt of what, I, what you want me to say today or I wouldn't be saying it. So, Lord, just help me to find the right uh, way to express uh, what I believe you want your people to hear, hear this morning. And I'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.17, very familiar verse to everybody. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I was thinking about these verses, and I, I was thinking about, I'll tell you what happens, and you can talk to people older than me, and, and, and I will, but you get older, and the, the holidays come, and you reminisce more. You think back. Time. Time's past. Old things. New things. And I, I'm not going to do acrobatics with these verses right here. I, I, I know what they mean. I know what they're there for. I know what, G, what uh, Paul was talking about when he wrote them. Paul had been fighting with the church at, at Corinth for a while. He started that church. Then he wrote them his first letter, uh, telling them all the awful things that he'd heard they were doing. Uh, and, and by the way, and Paul didn't write letters like we write letters, you know, with trifold, put a stamp on it. He had to go to the post office and mail his letters. They were thick, big book letters. And uh, so Paul was fighting with these Corinthians. And first off, he told them how he wanted them to act and heard what, what he'd heard they were doing. And then 2 Corinthians is Paul dealing with these same people who are now have fallen in love with and are enamored by these what Paul called uh, super apostles or the, these other the, these pretty boy preachers have come along and Paul was not a pretty boy. Paul couldn't see good. Paul was not, uh, the Bible describes him not being uh, really pretty to look upon, not great in stature. And so these, these guys came along and they started going, Paul, why, why should we listen to you? And so he's been dealing with these people. They even said, why don't you send us basically some, some references to tell us who you are and why we should listen to you. They'd lost their minds. And he basically told them, you are my references. I, I, you're a church I started. You're my reference. And as he's going along here, Paul, he finally, he just kind of breaks down here at this point And he, he says, listen, people, what, am I making this noise? What am I doing? I hear a thump, thump, thump. Okay. Um, he, says, he says, listen to me, people. You are, you need to figure out that if you're in Christ, if you're a believer, like Paul was a believer, something will change in you. You will change. You will get better, better than this. You'll stop all this mess. And you'll stop trying to tell me and challenge me. He says, I've, I've been with Jesus. Have any of these super apostles? I've actually hung out with Jesus. I've met Jesus. I met him on a road and I spent time with him. What about these guys? This is, it's, it's this thing, ain't it? I'm sorry, folks. I keep making noises that are probably driving you crazy at home and they're driving me crazy here. So let's all fix it together. So. Anyway, Paul's got troubles with these people. I know that's what these verses are about. He's telling them, if you've been with God, you'll be different. Moses was different when he'd been with God. His face shined. Uh, the apostles, uh, early on, when they went up on a, the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus, and they saw him in his glory, they wanted to build a house. They wanted to start putting up structures and stay there. You change when you've been with Jesus, and when you've seen him in his glory. And that's what Paul is telling us here. And so I'm not ignoring that. But I got to thinking about some Christmas past as I was reminiscing. Uh, I, I remembered one particular Christmas, probably 
1971, 1972, that seems like forever ago to most of you. Some of you don't seem like at all. It's like it didn't even happen, Lane. You've never saw it, right? But uh, we had Archie Bunker. It was a fun time to be alive. And um, I was, it was Christmas, and I was watching my Uncle Roy and my dad monopolize my new Rock'em Sock'em robots that I had just gotten for Christmas. And they were just banging away with those things, trying to knock each other's block off. Red Rocker, Blue Rocker, great toy. And there they were, monopolizing my toy. But I was just sitting there watching them, waiting for them to stop so I could snatch it and play with it myself. And um, my uncle, just out of the blue, he, just started, he goes, can you believe that John Lennon said he was bigger than Jesus? Now, John Lennon said that in 1966. This is years later. I don't know why my uncle was still mad about it. But it's still bothering him. And I believe the word dirty hippie was, was mentioned about John Lennon. But he said it. And I didn't have any, I didn't know any more about John Lennon or, or, or Jesus at the time. I, I, I'm, I'm still my old creature. And John Lennon was an old creature. And none of us, but, but the world got mad. Now, as, as I grew older, I defended John Lennon like, like so many did. I, I would say, you, here's what he meant. The kids were all crowding to see him. But as, I didn't have an internet, and I would have had to go to the library to find out what he actually said. And I wasn't going to do that. That's a lot of work, card catalog, all that. So here's what he actually said. I can look it up now. Here's what John Lennon said. Christianity will go. It will vanish and shrink. I needn't argue about that. I'm right, and I'll be proved right. We're more popular than Jesus now. I don't know which will go first, rock and roll or Christianity. Jesus was all right, but his disciples were thick and ordinary. It's them twisting things that ruins it for me. Now, that's what he actually said, and people got mad. Oh, did they get mad when he said it. You can go back and find videos of the album burnings where they were just burning all the Beatles albums, and they just lost their minds. And preachers beat on pulpits and stomped around and, and hollered about how awful John Lennon was and the Beatles were, and it was just the worst thing that ever happened. But I guarantee you, you go home tonight, you'll hear worse things on your TV, just in commercials. You'll see things more offensive uh, to, to the cause of Christ coming out of your TV tonight just trying to sell you clothes. People needn't have gotten all worked up about this. It was a terrible thing for him to say. But he went on to, he went on to write Imagine and say, Imagine no, there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. Th this was what he was doing. This was the life he was living in. It needn't surprise anybody. It was a lost guy saying lost guy things. It was a, a, a man who dabbled in uh, Eastern Indian religions and heavily into drugs. He said something stupid. We shouldn't be surprised and really shouldn't have got mad. He was an old creature. He was not a new creature. We needn't expect him to behave like a new creature in Christ. Now, cut forward 14 years from there to uh, December of 1980. Uh, this is a Christmas thing, and, and this comes to my mind every year, all of this. Um, and my, somebody, one of, one of John Lennon's followers, actually, a, a, a fan named Mark David Chapman, who claimed to be a new creature in Christ. He claimed he had gotten saved. And he went and he found John Lennon and he emptied a snub-nosed 38 revolver into him because of these words. Not a new creature. That's not what God called us to do. God didn't call us to go shoot his enemies he, he, that's not this gospel. That's, that's Old Testament judgment stuff. But that's not the gospel that we live by. So I, I, I don't want to challenge anybody's salvation, but I, this guy, with his, he wasn't carrying a Bible with him. He had Catcher in the Rye. And he went and he shot up John Lennon. Now, at the time, and still, I have a cousin who's always been a guy, kind of a boy out of his own time then, a man out of his time now. He was a gigantic Beatles fan, and his mom called me, and she said, you need to come down at the tire house and hang out with Mike tonight because of this, as I remember her saying it, because of this man getting shot. She didn't care who it was, but Mike did. Who boy, did he care. He was tore up about it. So I had to go to Dayton, Ohio. I had to go to a neighborhood in Dayton called, uh, well, it was, it, it, it's called um, Riverside. Riverdale, that's what it's called. This neighborhood, it's not like the Archies. It's not that kind of Riverdale. It's scary. Even then, then it was scary. I looked it up now. You can buy a six-bedroom house, 
Six bedroom, two bath there right now for $35,000. It is not a good neighborhood. I wouldn't go in that neighborhood without body armor and a gun. And uh, that uh, little tactical flashlight you got for Christmas with the, with the, uh, the strobe, it's, it wouldn't help you there. It's a dangerous place. But I had to go down, and it was dangerous then. Matter of fact, shortly after this, Mike started coming to our little town to go to school. His mom enrolled him. He had to live with us. So he, we lived, he lived in our house for a long time. But I went down to hold his hand and get him through the death of John Lennon uh, in this dangerous neighborhood. But like I said, this is, this is the, the Mark David Chapman, not a new creature. Fred, not a new creature. I was defending John Lennon. Everybody w- that I knew was. And I, and I don't believe that God sent Mark David Chapman with the catcher and the rye and a snub nose revolver to kill John Lennon because of something he said 14 years earlier. That's just one of those things that kind of happens. You know, you smoke cigarettes, you get cancer, you die. You say something really stupid when you're really famous, it might catch up with you. That's kind of what happened here. Always comes back to me every year, this, this story, because, it, it, listen, John Lennon said they were bigger than Jesus. A couple days ago, 160 countries celebrated the birth of Jesus on Christmas. John Lennon is still dead. Mark David Chapman is still in prison. And people are still having Christmas all over this world. People are still celebrating the birth of Jesus. And as for rock and roll, it's dead like Lennon, as far as I'm concerned. That's stuff they play now. I grew up with good music. What do you all got now? Uh, was a post Malone? Ugh, make that stop. And uh, the, the vampires and something I don't know. Terrible names, terrible bands. But that's that was the time that I grew up in. That was how I came through. Get the Christmas present, uh, future as now, and living as a new creature. We're having the time of our lives, Mar- Marlene and I. Th- this is the best time we've had in a long time. Other than when our kids were little and we were going to church and raising them, those were fun times. But now we're having a blast here with, with New Covenant Church. Here with this, this, these are our new habits. These are our new, uh, the, the, the new habits of these new creatures. And this, this is our new family. Now, our daughter is in the Middle East. I got this beautiful, wonderful, glorious, sad card from her the other day. You can't see it, but it, it, it's a... It's a, it's a Zoom call Christmas card. She's in one corner, and her dogs are each in their own little box, and her husband and a camel with a Santa Claus hat on. I don't know why. But that's, that's my Christmas present. She's there. And we're not. She's not here with us. But I know I got eternity with her. I know that she knows Christ, and I know that we'll all spend eternity together. There'll be plenty of time, and she'll be back. Uh, we've been talking about what we'll do when she gets back. I know that. We got to spend time. I, another kind of a reminisce was with uh, Brother Joe, Pastor Scott's brother, who was here the other day. Listen, if you ain't watched Joe's videos on his Facebook, when this is over, don't touch that dial now, wait. But when this is done, go watch Joe. He is like the missionaries of old. You, you, he's what you read about missionaries. He didn't go to Guatemala to start a church and have church on Sundays. He's traipsing through jungles hunting for people. He's, he's going to little villages, and there's videos of it online of him traipsing through woods and knocking trees out of the way to get to some little village and preach the gospel and then baptize people in garbage cans and uh, water tubs and whatever he can find. It's amazing to watch Brother Joe. I, he, he's another. Uh, it's good that he's in this time. Uh, I, I imagine Joe 100 years ago would have probably ended up the, 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 the chunks of meat in some African village's uh, Baptist stew because he would have been traipsing right into the jungle and shouting the gospel till he, uh, like a lot of them, <laughs> found himself in trouble because he's that kind of uh, uh, Indiana Jones missionary. I love Joe. But Joe used to uh, work with us in our junior church when he was, you know, he was just a little fella. We were doing junior church out at uh, another church here in the area, and they had junior church in a trailer. And when they dismissed us, little Joe would help us herd all the kids that had come on the uh, church bus, church van, and we'd herd them out there. And I'd preach to them like it was, uh, like I was uh, Billy Graham to a bunch of little kids that got off a bus because I was just learning how to preach. Seems like I hadn't learned yet, don't it? But here we are. So 
um, that was Christmas now. Now, like I said, 160 uh, nations celebrated Christmas. Uh, when you sign your checks, if you sign a check. But uh, here we got New Year's Day coming up, and it will be 2021 A.D. And the A.D. stands for Anno Dominus, and that means the year of our Lord. John Lennon missed it by that far. He, didn't, he wasn't close. Cr Christianity has not died. Christianity won't die. But as we get ready to go into a future, and, 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 and our Christmas future, <laughs> like Scrooge, as we're heading that way, we're not exactly excited to get there, are we? Because uh, we, we, we don't know what's coming. Last year we were excited. Yay, at this time it's, yay, New Year's Eve's coming. Yay, we were all excited. Anybody excited right now? We don't know what's coming next. We don't know if this, this new year will bring the end to the plagues that plague us or if we're going to have Toyota Land Cruiser-sized crawdads uh, chasing us down the street with uh, a squadron of uh, uh, murder hornets flying over top of them. We have no idea what's coming. It, it just could be. And the thing is, it could be all of that. This could be end times. We're all worrying about politics and worrying about who's going to be the next leader. I'll tell you what. Quit worrying about it. You're a new creation. You're a new creature. And your maker made you to go through whatever's coming. Right now, in Africa, there are parts of Africa where people are being slaughtered for Christianity, for, for the name of Christ. Right now. Right now, uh, Pastor Scott and I went back right before the plague hit to, uh, to, wa to a uh, missions conference. And, and we met some different missionaries from from. So it was kind of a secret mission conference. I can talk about it now. But they were from China and North Korea. Where if you go proclaiming the gospel, you get killed. You die for the gospel. And they don't have a trial. And they don't put you in jail and make a show of it. You're out preaching the gospel one day. And the next day nobody's ever heard from you again. You're just gone. That's how they get rid of you in North Korea. And I was watching these, looking at these little Bibles. They were, it'd be easier to read an eyedrop bottle than these Bibles, that these guys were risking their lives to sneak in to North Korea because people are hungry for the gospel there. They're starving for the gospel there. And they're suffering for Christ. And we've got it made here in, in the now. And we don't know what the future might come, uh, come to. We don't know what it might bring. But no matter what it is, us, new creations in Christ, how he made us, we're built to manage it. We're built to persevere. We're built like saints of old. We're built the same as they were. And we're having an easy life, but we could just as easily find ourselves on a, uh, you know, on a fiery pyre being uh, burned alive like they did. And Jesus would give you the strength like he gave them to proclaim the gospel. Just the same way he gave it to them. And we could find ourselves in, in all manner of trouble. Uh, Stephen in, in Acts chapter 7 was stoned to death. And as he was being stoned to death, he looked into the heavens and what did he see? Jesus stood up. Jesus got up because one of his saints was being martyred and he stood up. And that's who built us. That's who created us. We're new creatures in Christ. And as those new creatures, we're built for whatever comes next. So as we trod carefully tiptoe towards 2021 coming up this week as we fearfully less excitedly than in the past await to see what's coming know this you're built for it you're a new creature you're a new creation in Christ he made you for this for past present and future old things are passed away if you're in Christ there should have been a change in your life you should have seen that change and now, you're ready. Whatever comes, whatever happens to us, we're ready for it. Let's pray. Lord, it's hard when we can't uh, get together and see each other's faces. It's hard. Uh, Lord, it's hard to, to, to talk to a camera. But Father, you, your message is important. Your message is the most important thing, and we have to get it out. And, Lord, your people still need to gather in some way. 
and worship you and set aside this time for you. So I thank you for whatever you do with this message. And thank you going forward into the new year. For whatever happens, Lord, I know we're built for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.